The show is called Every Day is Alchemy. Beginning of the year, I met up with Stefan von Barta, um, whose galleries we are in, if I would fancy to create a show um, in his gallery, in his showroom, on the subject on, on Latin America. And we started to discuss what does it mean, Latin America, and what is it geographically. And obviously we soon found out that it's much bigger than we, we thought, um, or he thought, on the beginning. And first, when I talk to people about Latin America, we first have to discuss where is Mexico, is that South America? Of course it's not. What does it mean, art from Latin America? Is it just a stamp to, that we understand? Do we have in Europe that we say art from Europe? We don't. But I thought it's important to give a, an insight, an overview, um, where I also come from, but also what are the practices of the artists from Latin America. And there I invited one Swiss artist, Michael Günzburger. Even so, he has relatives in, in Brazil, but he's Swiss. And, and that what he shows is these nationalities. Is it important today? Do they investigate different than people from here, from Switzerland? Um, where would be bridges, where we could build bridges, etc. So I started off on the subject, every day is alchemy, obviously on the history of the Spanish colonization, but also about how they want to always produce gold, they never could, they went to the El Dorado and stole it. I bring the gold back to, to here, to Basel. Um, so I thought like, how could, I, how could I put it together? So I started off with Michael Günzburger, who is for me a true alchemist. He uses his work as metaphor. He makes prints out of drawings. He defines the drawing different. And there where I would have the overlay to Joanna on Sueta, um, who normally works more in sculpture, more in felt. There's the metaphor, Josef Boys, who overly used that. And for her, in her new drawings, where one of the women of Lino Bombardi shows new ways or, or has shown new ways of how to display, how to go about in a room, etc. And she transformed it for, for herself for a new way to display drawings. To Elena Damiani, who is from Peru, to Montes Manio, who is from Brazil, I oppositely put Bruno Papistelli, who is a young Brazilian, Montes is an old man, um, to Mexico with Omar Parque, with his metaphor of poetry, of shamanistic words, to Otto Berham, who is from the States, but he lives in Colombia, to Monica Bravo, who is from Colombia, lives in the States, to Honduras, where Adan Vallecillo is from, where he made the work of uh, with um, Kautuk, and for him, for example, he, he made like a sculpture. It looks like a painting, but it's sculptures. And what I found interesting are the different layers they use, um, first on the artistic practice, but also on, on political issues. They have different layer, which you maybe don't see in the beginning. For example, with him, you see a, a black kind of painting. For him, it's a sculpture made out of um, cut um, tiles. Um, made out of caoutchouc. So the questions arise, you know, is caoutchouc good, is it not? For some has brought lots of wealth, from others has brought death and pain and all that. And how can we see something like that and try to understand where, where things come from and where they also could lead? And one thing what I found is very um, interesting and, and inspiring that, for example, uh, Montes Manu's piece, I brought here, which is kind of a map, and he showed this for his first time in the third Havana Biennale in 1989, kind of a remapping, remapping of the world. And today we have again, we have a remapping of the world, what happens around us on, on politics. Um, and of course, it's a metaphor for us, and um, I hope it gives maybe a new way, maybe a bridge, how we can understand each other on, uh, through an artistic view, a, a vision which art, artists have. And I think it's very important in society that we 
um, can use these metaphors for our personal life, which enriches us, which maybe en enable us to have our own vision through artistic eyes. And this, this is one reason why I love to do these shows or shows in general um, and work with artists. In Omar Sparquet's work, Cold Voice, you can see a book title which one part, it shows a kind of a circle, like a, a universe and, and part of a mask, could be an agent mask and a Mayan mask, somewhere from Teotihuacan. And you see the mirror and what he tries to say or what he tries to do with the viewer is that you see like history, you see an emptiness, the universe, and you see a mirror where yourself, you see as kind of reflect, reflects about yourself where do you put yourself into history and universe? Where is your place? Why are we here? What are what we doing, um, etc. And this cold voice, as the title says, initiates a lot of transformation. And for me, a perfect work for every day's alchemy, how we go about um, art in our daily life and, and what can it do with, with, with our questions, our big questions, which we have. And I think it's very important that in an artistic work, you, you can then see yourself, maybe yourself in, in this particular one, really yourself. And obviously you immediately start to think about this. Um, if you know about the title, if you don't know about the title and you just see it as you see it, you will have, you will erase questions. And, and for me that is, part of good art, does it arise questions and does it have different layers? And where would it take me? So today I maybe I see the old mask, tomorrow I see the universe, and on day three I can see myself and where do I put myself in, in, in this kind of context? I find it fascinating and I'm very happy that Omar gave me this piece for, for this show um, in Everyday's Alchemy. And if I go then to Monica Bravo, who basically investigates with her color scheme the question of painting and is it a painting or is it a sculpture or, or what? Colors, they move us. So for, you know, we have obviously the blatantly what blue means, what red means, but if we take this out of context, what, what's going to happen with us through color in life? Um, it can make us sad, it can bring us to another level, it can make us happy, um, it can make us aggressive. So we, we know we shouldn't have red in the bedroom so we can't sleep. Um, but what happens if you use that in a living room and where it infects you of more talking, um, also philosophical talks, and there were the works of her leaves in her own biography that she told me that all these colors, they came out like a river, like um, running water or waterfall. And, and the passion which she has um, immediately jumps over to you. And this investigation of transformation, what could be a material, what could be the, the subject of sculpture, is it a painting? And where does that take us? Um, I find it very fascinating. Um, and she calls this work, Build Objects. So also in the title, she already puts it clear that it's not for her classical paintings, that it could be an object, like if you see a, a sculpture. And I found in the works of Michael Gunzburger um, a true alchemist because he investigates what is the material, but where could the material take. He always starts with a line of drawing, but what does that mean? And a line could be also a stone, it could be also a stone print, it could be also that on the stone print there is a drawing, and on the stone print drawing, only the drawing. So he plays around um, with materials and follows then what he would like to try to say in the picture. And the, the works which have been seen here, they could be a landscape, an abstract landscape, um, a soothing abstract, landscaping who kind of um, mediates us peace, quietness, reflection, 
And I think that in every day, and in every day's alchemy, if we just would stop for a minute and, and look at silence and, and be peaceful also with ourselves, I think we would become even better beings. And I find that as well fascinating that uh, an artist like Michael can, can trigger this, that you stand still and you, you cannot look any other way. You don't think it's an aggressive, it's a loud thing, like with, maybe with Monica. No, it goes completely the other way where you find this peace and quietness and eternity. And on eternity for me is also Elena Damiani's work with the, her investigation about Stone, also where she's from, from Lima. And if anyone has been to Lima, if you go by bus one minute out of the city or an hour out of the city, you, this, the desert star, desert of stone, and you have the sea on one side and you have stone desert on the others. And nature makes so much a big, Im or has such a big impact, what it can trigger off in you. Uh, and we put this again in our everyday life, not only everyday's alchemy, where does that carry us? And I think it opens us uh, for us very philosophical questions. Um, and I think that's pure luxury that we can think about this. And I would say last but not least, Otto Berghem's photographic works, where, which is about the manifestation and the signs which have um, sentence on it for the manifestations. He painted it colorful and he, he basically uses a different ABC because if we think if the color we use would be a different ABC, maybe it could say something different. Maybe it could also be a progress um, and we need progress, we need um, maybe a new language for everyone, and maybe the language is color, and there the overlay and the, the bridge would be again to Monica's work. Um, and I find with all the artists which are shown here, um, they have a very specific language, but one language goes in the other language, and it is not because it's Spanish or English or German or whatever, they have kind of a common language where they trigger something in, in the viewer. And for me, that's the most important thing. If I have artworks, which I look at, that it has different layers, that it triggers something, that it moves me one way or the other, and that I become my personal own every day's alchemist. I find that um, what I take out of the show, which I take at home in my heart, and I find that very fascinating.